Essentially, black operations were not only caught dealing arms illegally and supporting South American dictators, but also smuggling drugs into the United States. Iran-Contra was really the merging of two different programs. Uh, the first one was support for the Contras, who were, let's face it, a force of terrorists in uh, Nicaragua trying to overthrow the Sandinista government. They were being secretly supported by the CIA. And at the bottom of the whole thing was drugs. Iran-Contra was openly exposed by massive network coverage. How was it that in three years, a network Washington set up to run arms to the Contras wound up running cocaine into this country for the most vicious drug cartel in the world? At the same time, we were supposed to be fighting a war against drugs. But by the same token, I also smuggled my share of weapons in exchange for those illegal substances with the full knowledge and assistance of both the DEA and CIA. Betzner says that in 1983, he flew weapons from Florida to El Salvador and drugs from Colombia to the Bahamas on the way back. In 1984, he says, he flew twice from Florida to Costa Rica and back. We could bring back our own cargo, and they would arrange it, or we could bring back their cargo without ever having to worry about interception, arrest, anything like this, that everything was taken care of. What kind of cargo were you talking about? Drugs. Tolliver says he had two meetings with this man, CIA veteran Rafael Quintero. Then in March of 1986, he says he flew 14 tons of weapons down to Honduras, to this Contra resupply base set up by the CIA. We take off from Tegucigalpa, Honduras, and we leave. To? South Florida. Where in South Florida? We landed at Homestead. Homestead? Air Force Base. This is the plane Tolliver says he used. The plane traces to a company that had a State Department contract to fly humanitarian supplies to the Contras. In addition to that, three dozen sources confirm the basic scheme. We can now report that long before that operation began, there was another operation to provide guns for the Contras, which was also against the law. In this operation, Americans and Israelis provided arms to the Contras, and then the same network smuggled drugs into the United States. The operation was launched in spring of 1983 at Washington's request with at least $20 million of Israeli government money later reimbursed, we're told, from U.S. covert operations funds. For about five years, uh, people were flying arms into Iran and most of them came from Israel. The Israelis purchased the weapons from Poland and Czechoslovakia and began shipping them secretly from Yugoslavia to Bolivia and then to Panama. The Israeli liaison man there, this man, Michael Harari, until recently a close aide to Panama's strongman, General Manuel Noriega. You bring the ship into Colombia, you would load drugs aboard it, and you would bring those drugs back to Panama with you. But bringing that stuff into the United States, that was something else. I, I've never been so thoroughly disgusted with myself in my life. This network would also be involved in the October Surprise. We really can't understand that unless we understand the so-called October Surprise in the 1980 election, which is, uh, I think, unquestionably Republicans, including uh, William Casey, who later became Reagan's head of the CIA, negotiated with the Iranians for them not to release the hostages which were being held in Iran to Carter, but to wait until the uh, Carter was defeated and the Republicans were in. That is what actually happened, that the hostages were only released on the day that Carter left office and Reagan came in. Unbelievably, this same network would even be linked to the BCCI banking scandal by journalist Danny Casolaro. Casolaro was probing a conspiracy he called the octopus, which involved the Iranian hostage crisis, the Iran-Contra affair, with, believe it or not, all funds channeled through BCCI, the international bank charged with everything from money laundering to fraud. BCCI, it's a shadowy international bank linked to terrorists, drug runners, and dictators. Little was known about BCCI until six of its top officers were arrested in Tampa in October of 1988 on charges of laundering drug money for Colombian cocaine bosses. The BCCI men were convicted and the bank itself pleaded guilty. But for some reason, the bank was allowed to continue to operate all over the world. There are indications that some of the reluctance 
to prosecute this bank stem for the fa from the favors it did for the favors it did for intelligence services everywhere too many secrets of too many countries too many prominent people too many hands on and that makes it desirable that this entire affair be forgotten it began to become clear that the global traffic of drugs were funding violent dictators rigging elections supporting the arms trade and enforcing the assassination of anyone who got in the way Casalero was found dead for his efforts in exposing this network his death of course ruled a suicide he was meeting a source in West Virginia he was about to discover all instead his body was discovered in a hotel room with 12 slashes in his wrist but when the local authorities ruled it suicide the family said no way the housekeeper had taken calls threatening his life and I pick it up telephone I say hello and he say to me you son of a bitch is dead Casalero would not be the only person involved in the scandal to wind up in a casket meet Barry Seal at first the media portrayed Seal as a drug dealer gone good who was assassinated by the Colombian Mafia Authorities believe last night's machine gun killing of top drug informant Barry Seal was ordered by drug bosses in Medellin, Colombia, who sent five men to Baton Rouge to kill Seal. Sam Dalton was the lawyer that represented the Colombian hitman convicted of his assassination. We were trying to subpoena the CIA because we felt like they had documents, exhibits, and evidence that would indicate complicity in Seal's assassination. When they were able to gain access of Barry Seal's trunk the night of the murder, the personal phone number of none other than George H.W. Bush was present. Louis Unglesby, the former attorney for Mr. Seal, also confirms that he once called the office of the vice president after Seal had given him the number. You see, the black ops drug smuggling operation had not yet been exposed, and intelligence couldn't take any chances. It was later revealed that Seal was involved in smuggling cocaine into Mena, Arkansas, while Bill Clinton sat as governor. 1983, Ronald Reagan was president, Bill Clinton was governor, and little Mina, Arkansas, changed from a quiet town to a center for drug smuggling and reported Contra support activity. In the middle of it all, this man, admitted dope smuggler Barry Seal. Arkansas State Trooper Russell Welch investigated Seal's organization. Each trip would have uh, 250 to 350 pounds of cocaine. According to the London Telegraph, Arkansas State Trooper Larry Patterson testified under oath that he and his officers discussed repeatedly in Clinton's presence the large quantities of drugs being flown into Mena Airport, large quantities of money, large quantities of guns. Hot Springs police officers would also record Roger Clinton, Bill's brother, during a cocaine transaction stating, Gotta get some for my brother. He's got a nose like a vacuum cleaner. There was also a large amount of money laundering going on in Mena. Former IRS agent William Duncan traced some of Seal's drug profits laundered through Mena banks. We had direct testimony from people who were involved in the money laundering operation. We had testimony from people at banks who observed the transactions. What happened when you tried to make this case before a grand jury? I was never asked to present the evidence to a grand jury, ever. This very same network used BCCI to fund the Afghani rebels. The deputy director of the CIA, Richard Kerr, said late today that the CIA did use the Bank of Credit and Commerce International, BCCI, to support CIA activities overseas. Most people still believe that the Soviets had maliciously invaded Afghanistan in order to spread their communist agenda. The Al-Qaeda was essentially a kind of in, a byproduct of Brzezinski's campaign to embarrass the Soviet Union in Afghanistan. They, they weren't in Afghanistan at that time. Brzezinski boasted later that he was uh, responsible for drawing them into Afghanistan. And he did this extraordinary interview with uh, Le Nouvel Observateur in France and they said but aren't you worried that you've uh, created this whole new force of uh, Al-Qaeda and he said oh what's more important a few crazed Islamists or the fall of the Berlin Wall and uh, they said but you know is there no danger isn't aren't they dangerous and he said nonsense he said all this in 1998 uh, <laughs> 
So uh, I consider, I knew Brzezinski at and, and, and McGill University. We were students together and took very small classes together. And in some ways he's bright and in some ways he's kind of nuts. And um, he's, he had the kind of nuttiness that uh, made him attractive to the Rockefellers. Bin Laden and his network were actually funded by BCCI through U.S. covert operations. Well, the reason I bring it up, if you've ever heard any of our call-in shows, you know that we have people that uh, think about the conspiracy theories mm -hmm. of people like you. Uh, you would be a poster child for these people because you have served on the board of the Council on Foreign Relations. You started, helped start the Trilateral Commission, and you've been to the Bilderberger Group. Too, are people too close in this world, uh, people in business, too close to the, the governments? Well... You know, th there is such a thing as insidious influence. And the question is, how does it operate? Does it involve bribery? And does it involve some sort of psychological domination of individuals? I don't believe in this notion of some sort of secret societies controlling people. But, of course, in any political system, there are sort of over the table and under the table arrangements. Arrangements that involve ruthless, illegal, and immoral activities in order to dominate humanity. Despite all of the evidence that has just been presented, this network would fall down the memory hole, even though 14 convictions were made in the Iran-Contra scandal. The continued cover-up would be made possible by George H.W. Bush. Uh, these documents that came forward in the North trial uh, clearly reveal the involvement of the vice president to a greater degree, I think, than he has acknowledged heretofore. This, of course, did not stop him from pardoning those involved during the twilight of his presidency. Some new reverberations today to President Bush's Christmas Eve surprise, the pardoning of former Defense Secretary Caspar Weinberger and several others in connection with the Iran-Contra allegations. Well, now the special prosecutor says it's the president who needs to explain some things. The real issue is why the notes weren't produced five years ago when the congressional investigation and the independent counsel's investigation had requested them. Because high-level political officials scrambled to limit the investigation and establish plausible deniability for the upper echelons of the network, including Bush himself. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us.